The people have spoken. I love democracy. Let's explore the dragons of House of the Dragon. Or at least the ones residing on Dragonstone. Have I mentioned the word dragon yet? Where are you, your oath to Rhaenyra as your queen? This is a part two to my video about the current and potential allies of Team Black. This one won't contain any spoilers either for the future of Hot D. In this one, we'll be diving into the caverns of the Dragonmont to inspect all of the fire breathing nukes Queen Rhaenyra has at her disposal. I'll talk about the green allies and their dragons in a later video. If you want to see it, make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons. This community has been blowing up recently, and I can't wait for us to reach new heights. Now, without further ado, this is Fantasy Haven, your home for all things fantasy. Let's dive right into it. When the Black Council talks strategy, Lord Bartimos Keltegar points out the obvious. They have the ultimate scaly weapons of war. In an early draft of the script, Damon calls him Bartimos the Based. No, he doesn't. But he does echo Lord Keltegar's point. Team Black has more dragons than Team Green. Those bonded to a rider include Melis, Caraxes, Cyrax, Vermax, Arax, Tyraxes, and Moondancer. According to this official chart, the largest of these is Melis the Red Queen, ridden by Princess Rhaenys. Back in 75 AC, she was claimed by Daemon's mother slash aunt, the Princess Alyssa Targaryen, who gave her baby children dragon rides. No wonder Viserys hates dragons. Alyssa died during childbirth, and three years later, her niece Rhaenys claimed Melis the Red Beast. Damn, that kind of goes hard. She was once renowned for her swiftness, being faster than both Vhagar and Caraxes. She may be older and slower now, but no less cunning. We see her burst through the floor of the Dragon Pit during Aegon's coronation, a scene invented for the show only, for some reason. During the second session of the Black Council, Rhaenys declares that she will take Melis to the Gullet to help the Vlarian fleet enforce the blockade of King's Landing. Watch out, Davos. No smuggler is safe. A smuggler. The second largest dragon is the tempestuous and moody Caraxes. Dogs and owners, eh? Early concept art by Constantine Sakaris shows clear inspiration from the dragons of Chinese mythology, which were inspired more by snakes than lizards. Dragon, not lizard. Due to his red scales and serpentine neck, he is known as the blood worm by many, and the spicy noodle by others. Caraxes appears to be mutated. His neck is absurdly long, which transforms his roar into an angry dolphin shriek. and may even affect the power of his flames. Look at the way he utterly disintegrates soldiers in the stepstones, compared to sea smoke. You may have also noticed the wing-like membranes on his legs, developed to keep him in the air despite the unfortunate neck situation. Prince Daemon is the Bloodworm's second rider. The first was his uncle, Prince Aemon Targaryen, the firstborn son of King Jaehaerys and father to Princess Rhaenys. Aemon claimed him in 72 AC, 11 years later, when Prince Morian Martell led a Dornish fleet to invade the Seven Kingdoms, Aemon and Caraxes lit the seas aflame. Nine years later, when mere men invaded the island of Tarth, they once more joined battle. Tragically, Prince Aemon was slain by a crossbow bolt while Caraxes was busy eating sheep. Yeah, that sounds about right. Next up is Cyrax, an all-round good girl. This yellow mount is named after a Valyrian deity, thanks to the imagination of the seven-year-old Rhaenyra Targaryen. As we see in House of the Dragon, the young princess loved to fly Cyrax over the skies of King's Landing and probably beyond. Rhaenyra has also used her as a source of intimidation, first against her uncle Daemon and then against the traitorous Otto Hightower. I know you keep commenting on my videos, Otto. I've got my eyes on you. Cyrax is younger and smaller than Caraxes and Melis, and neither she nor her rider have seen battle. She is certainly fearsome, but will Rhaenyra dare ride her into battle? This upcoming war is a struggle for succession. Is it wise for the Black Queen to risk her life above the battlefield? Let's move on to the next generation of dragons. The children of Rhaenyra and <clears throat> Laenor are bonded to Vermax, Arax, and Tyraxes. When they were eggs, they were all placed in their eventual rider's cradle. Viserys did this to shut up the rumours about their illegitimacy. Prince Jaceris Velaryon is bonded to the olive green Vermax. We first see him as a moody teenage dragon, being commanded to roast a goat by his young rider. Six years later, Vermax has suddenly grown. He is still young, but larger than Arax, the white and gold mount of Prince Lucaris Velaryon. Both dragons are sent off on quests by Queen Rhaenyra. Jason Vermax must fly to the Eyrie and Winterfell to secure the support of Lady Jane Arryn and Lord Cregan Stark, respectively, while Luke and Arax are sent to Storm's End. We don't see Tyraxes this season, but he's bonded to Prince Joffrey Velaryon. His colour is never actually described in Fire and Blood, so hopefully we'll discover this next season. Also, Rhaenyra and Daemon's son, Aegon the Younger, has a baby dragon called Stormcloud in the book. But, uh, yeah, no. Finally, we have Daemon's daughters. Or, should I say, daughter. Princess Baylor Targaryen is bonded with Moondancer, the pale green dragon known for its speed and nimbleness. We haven't seen her yet. Her sister, Princess Rhaena Targaryen, has not bonded with the dragon. 
This affects her deeply, and to rub salt into the wound, her plan to claim Vagar was thwarted by Draco Malf- I mean Aemond. Raina complains that her father pays more attention to her dragon-riding sister Baela than to her. Although, to be fair, Daemon doesn't seem to pay attention to either of them in Season 1. Anyway, when Daemon brings up the unclaimed dragons, Raina looks intrigued. That's right, there are more fire-breathing hooks living on Dragonstone. Tamed, but unclaimed. There are three trained but riderless dragons left on Dragonstone. Vermithor, Silverwing, and Sea Smoke. The oldest of this batch, in fact, the second oldest dragon in all of Westeros, is Vermithor, the Bronze Fury. As you can imagine, Vermithor is a huge bronze beast. His mate is the silvery she-dragon, Silverwing, who is known to be far more friendly. As eggs, they were supposedly placed in the cradle of their respective riders. Vermithor was bonded to King Jaehaerys I, Silverwing to his sister-wife, Queen Alysanne. They travelled all over Westeros during royal progresses, from Old Town to Storm's End to Winterfell. Vermithor helped Caraxes burn the fleet of Morian Martell during the Fourth Dornish War. Silverwing has never seen battle, but she has flown beyond the wall. Not far, though. Three times Queen Alysanne tried to venture northwards, and three times Silverwing veered back south. Ever since the old king and the good queen passed away, Vermithor and Silverwing have been in retirement, dwelling together in the bowels of the Dragonmont. Daemon visits Vermithor, calming the grumpy old creature with a High Valyrian song. But Daemon already rides Craxes, so what exactly could he be preparing the Bronze Beast for? The third riderless dragon is Sea Smoke. We know that this nimble grey dragon was ridden by Lainor Valarian and saw combat in the Stepstones. According to Daemon, he's residing on Driftmark, but is he truly riderless? Humans are bonded to dragons for life, and Lainor's fate is currently unknown. He faked his death for a life of anonymity and fighting, leaving the dragon behind. In Fire and Blood, Lainor dies for real, so book readers are in uncharted territory here. Will the bond be severed by time and distance? Will Lainor die beyond the Narrow Sea? Or will he return to ride Sea Smoke once more? There are three more riderless dragons, of course, but these ones are far from tamed. These are the wild dragons, who have lived on Dragonstone without being claimed. Sheepstealer is an ugly, skinny, brown dragon with a penchant for roast mutton. Interestingly, she's not aggressive towards humans unless provoked. While she likes burning flocks of sheep for a midnight snack, she does leave the shepherds alone. As does the Grey Ghost, named so by the small folk for being a pale, shy creature that rarely shows itself to men. He loves to snatch fish from the narrow sea, and will sometimes disappear for years at a time before being spotted again, sneaking around Dragonstone. They are wild, but fairly harmless. Unlike the Cannibal, a black, monstrous dragon, the oldest of the three wild dragons, and if you believe the legends, older than the Targaryen arrival in Westeros. He skulks around the back of the Dragonmont, feasting on young dragons both alive and dead, as well as their eggs. A few foolish men have tried to tame him, but I don't think you need me to explain the outcome. There we have it. The Blacks have access to seven dragons with riders, and six dragons without. But it's not that simple. For one, Prince Joffrey is only six years old, so he's not going to be riding Tyraxis into battle anytime soon. Furthermore, Lucaris and Arax were butchered by the monstrous Vhagar above Storm's End, the first human and dragon casualty of the Civil War. Vermithor, Silverwing, and Sea Smoke have previously been trained and mounted, and Daemon's singing scene shows they are not a lost cause. Sheepstealer is friendly but wild, Grey Ghost is always hiding, and the Cannibal is the dragon equivalent of Ramsay Bolton. Pork sausage. So whether the wild dragons can be tamed is up for debate. And who would even ride these six riderless beasts? Raina has the Valyrian blood and the will to do so, and Lainor might still be alive to ride Sea Smoke again, but that doesn't account for the other four dragons. As it currently stands, Team Black has five dragons to face against the four dragons on Team Green. It would be an even match if the Greens didn't have Vagar. But wars aren't all about dragons. To learn more about Rhaenyra's allies, check out my previous video. Feel free to like, subscribe, and comment to help build up this awesome community. My next video will be something very special. Trust me, you don't want to miss out.